this man defines the word dude. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> he is an unwavering advocate for independent shops. This man works around the clock to better our industry. He is the executive director for Society of Collision Repair Specialists, SCRS. Welcome our good friend, Aaron Schulenberg. What's happening, my man? Aaron, what's happening, Woo! guys? What a I'm with Kenna. What an intro. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to share that later as well. I, <laughs> I will tell you guys, I this is just such an awesome thing to be a part of, to follow the comments from Kenna and Mel and everybody. Like I, I am uplifted already. So uh thanks for having me here. That's why we do this, man. And then we get to hang out with cool guys like you. So that's pretty fun, right? So let's jump into it. I think uh, we've got a, we got a lot to cover in a very short few minutes here. Um, but why don't we talk about some things that are happening in the industry? And, um, you know, you get to see so many shops. You have such a unique perspective. You're talking to all kinds of people all the time. Um, we just want to hear from you. But what are some of the biggest challenges for shops in, in this last year that you've seen people dealing with? And, and how are they taking those challenges and spinning that into opportunity? Yeah, so here's what I think is really cool about this. I came in anticipating that I would take a unique angle on this particular type of conversation, and it ties in entirely with everything that you've talked about uh, leading up to it. I, look, I think from an issue standpoint, we could talk about the rising costs. We could talk about downward pressure on charges. You could talk about the advancing technology and the challenges that presents. Um, you could talk about technician shortages, and I think we've touched some on that. But I think all of those things are tied together um, by a challenge that I see with inclusion repairers, which is understanding your culture um, and blaming the outcome rather than maybe uh, looking at the root cause to some of that. And I, I think culture becomes such a such a tie that binds for all those issues, right? Mm. Um, it for the businesses who are able to command what they charge, culture is why. And the businesses that aren't able to, culture is often why as well, right? right? And if you are able to pull in new technicians and grow your business, culture is often going to be why. And it's also why you may be uh, seeing attrition and things like that. And when you can look at it and step back, Mel, you talked about it, right? Like when you can go, I want to reevaluate what we're actually doing and attract these people, the, the, the right people, the ones who fit. I only want people who fit within what I'm trying to accomplish. I think you start to see some changes. And... Um, Amber, Amber's suggestion to you, Dave, was maybe starting with asking your employees why they like working for you. And, and it was interesting. I took note of it because the question probably should be ask if they like working for you. You're right. Um, <laughs> because there's a big difference between those two questions. And, and so actually that we worked with ICAR last year and ICAR really uh, led a lot of the way on this. But, but performing a technician survey, because we have all this conversation around tech shortages and industry workforce shortages, and it, it became really important to go, well, you know, what does the technician think? Where are we? And, and are there opportunities for us to improve, like, who we are as businesses and what we do as businesses and why and how we do it that would speak to um, the folks out there that we're responsible for creating better lives for, right? Um who then in turn create better better experiences for our customers. And we we ended up surveying uh, around 850 technicians responded to the, to the survey and we, we worked collectively with Ducker Carlisle. And Ducker was really important in this because they've actually done similar surveys with uh, OEM groups and other organizations looking at dealer technician satisfaction. And I think understanding mm -hmm. like employee satisfaction is a really big clue into what your culture looks like within. And so we looked at it as an association and 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 with ICAR to go, if people have a choice of going into our industry, into other industries, into other fields, other career paths, how do we relate to that? How can we change that? How can we step up our game in relationship to it and understanding like how the technicians perceive it becomes really important. And I know this is a positivity summit. So we're looking at lifting ourselves up. But sometimes to do that, you have to look at the base level and look at where you are. Yep. And I think that there's some uncomfortable conversation to be had around what culture looks like in our industry today. Sure. And I think a lot of the people who are on this call probably exceed that and find ways to overcome that. But the industry as a whole has a challenge. And so I think when you start looking at things of the 850-ish technicians who responded, over a quarter of those were unsatisfied and planning to leave their current role within the next two years. They told wow. us that. I mean, yeah. that's that's impactful information and that feels gloomy, 
But I think it also opens up this opportunity to go, well, well, why? Exactly. And how do we change that? Um, and I think what's interesting to me is we blame a lot of these external resources, but some of the key drivers, the biggest reasons why somebody either looks to stay or looks to leave is going to be work environment and the appreciation demonstrated by management and feeling mm. like I matter, feeling valued. And I think that's like, I think that is an under um, appreciated asset that we bring to the table. And I think it's where you do have a lot of opportunity for these businesses. So if shop culture and management and value and overall team and uh, environment map matter, I think it's important to recognize that somebody will stay for that and they will leave for that, right? Yeah. So we got this feedback where the top five reasons for staying, compensation certainly up there, but culture and management was the number four reason why somebody will stay where they are. Mm. Bad culture and not feeling valued was the number one reason why they leave. So it's not because I can go make money somewhere else. It's not because I can go capture something somewhere else. It's because I don't have the support that I need here, right? So on the good category, on the I want to stay here, the boss is one of the best I've ever had. Their understanding of everyone in the shop. They treat us very well. We're like a part of the family. Well, we have the ability. This is an industry that can make people feel like they're a part of the family. Family-owned businesses are really good at that. And that's a great attribute that they have. Yeah, that almost seems like a strategic advantage for shops. Yeah, right it there. Is. It's a huge strategic advantage. Yeah. Yep. So, so you can differentiate yourselves from large corporations, large entities, other industries that don't have family-owned business as a priority and go, this is part of the value we bring. You matter here. You're part of our family. This is the culture that we've built our business around. On the flip side is, I if I know now or know then what I know now, right? The tech is treated so disrespectfully here. I would have left this industry a long time ago. I feel my career's flatlined and benefits mm. play a huge role, but I'm not valued. And, mm. and I think we associate value with compensation a lot of times and compensation plays a role, but there are other things. I know Danny Grittenberg, I think is on the line right now with the DEG. And I've talked about this forever. The DEG is a resource to address errors and emissions in the estimating systems. Every shop who is on this call has had a technician come and throw an estimate on the desk and go, I can't do it for that, right? Mm -hmm. And when we say, we just got to get the car out, we're telling them their professional expertise isn't valued. Mm -hmm. And instead, you go through the five-minute process of submitting an inquiry and going, hey, we're going to challenge this. We're going to ask the question, is this enough time? Is there missing information? Is there any of this? Now you're telling them you do matter, right? So you're saying, you're, you're showing them just the opposite. Little with things like that, that cost you no money, that just cost you the, the time of saying, I hear what you're saying and I recognize it. Those are ways to actually like increase culture while also addressing other other issues that 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 are a result of it. Yeah. I think compensation and pay are another piece of it, obviously. Amount is important. How you pay people is important. I think that's, what we identify that's, just, that's table stakes, right? That's table right. stakes. It's it's everything else that that you mentioned that really matters. You know, the the fact is, is as it relates to this so-called talent shortage, nobody's coming to save us, right? Yeah. And to your point, it starts with us looking in the mirror and taking personal responsibility for the culture of our shop. That's what attracts or repels people, bottom line. You, 100%. And, and I think, go back to Amber's advice, right? Ask them why they like working for you. Ask them if they like working for you. I think the vast majority of this industry defaults to things like flat rate, and I'm not going to advocate for or against, but I think that there is a lot of, there's a lot of information that came through in the technician survey that basically said technicians in a flat rate environment would not recommend the career to their family or friends. Now they didn't get asked, they didn't say it because of that, but because mm -hmm. they're in that environment, that's their result. They wouldn't recommend the career. Conversely, the vast majority of technicians who were in an environment that was another type, any other type of pay model, would recommend their career. That's that's yeah. interesting information to take away where somebody can go, why do I maybe default to this methodology? Why do I say, this is what we're going to do? Is it because is, is of what I've always done? Is it because I believe we'll lose productivity? Is it because I believe my most tenured techs are going to make more because because of all that, but what does that do to my least tenured techs or the people I'm trying to attract in? And I think yeah. we need to start asking those questions. Yeah, Aaron, we've we've only got a couple minutes left and I, re I think it's really important. I, I wanna know, you guys do so much for the industry and so many mm -hmm. things to help level the playing field for independent shops. 
what kind of initiatives are you guys working on? What's SCRS been up to? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, so I think one of them is trying to address these types of issues. So Mel talked about um, needing to step up around benefits and things along those lines. And that's been something that's been very near and dear to our heart as an organization. How do we make the lives of the people in this industry better, right? How do we find ways to give small family-owned businesses and really businesses of any size, but we're starting there, the ability to compete with larger organizations to attract people into this trade and to give people a better future, a healthier financial future, healthier families, things along those lines. So we spent a lot of time over the last um, you know, 24 months building out benefit programs that mm. are available nationally that help provide resources that are comparable with Fortune 500 style businesses. Um, and have done so really effectively. I think when we closed out this past year, what we found was that our healthcare program that we developed is actually one of the fastest growing association healthcare programs in the in the country, not just in our industry, but in the country. Wow. And so I think there's a lot of excitement there. What can we do to leverage the size and scope of an association to pull this community together and really serve the society of collision repair specialists, right? Not just the name, but like this idea that we are a society and how do you lift that society up through leveraging the full scope of it? And, and so we've spent a lot of time doing that along with other research projects, you know, so that we could try to address some of those core issues that, you know, collision repair businesses struggle with and provide them with the information to advocate for themselves. I'm, yeah. My phone's blowing up, Aaron. Like literally people are like, one one comment here is, how do I get my grubby little hands on that report that Aaron was talking about? So yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like Deborah uh, on our team. Thank you, Deborah. Put uh, something called SCRS Benefit Center dot the site, uh, something in. Yeah. And so we've got the link in the chat for you guys. Um, thank you for everything you're doing for our shops, Aaron. That means a lot to all of us, yes. brother. It well, really you are the dude, pleasure. just like Ryan said, you are the, the dude. dude. <laughs> That's going <laughs> to stick with you. So, yeah, thanks for I joining appreciate us. Everything you guys do to help amplify and provide platforms for 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 people to to demonstrate their leadership in this industry. Seriously, it's 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 amazing, and um, glad to work with you all to help make a difference. Thanks for joining us, brother. Appreciate you so much. Cheers, guys. All right, Aaron Schulenberg, everybody. Yes, All right.